a journey. So many of you ask about my life journey and on this trip, I'm telling you my story. There wasn't a career to be made in the automotive world in those days. There were very few cars. Automotive journalism still hadn't happened that big. I graduated with a commerce degree, but had no intention of pursuing anything that would put me behind a desk. I did a stint of interior designing in college where I ran my own business and I wanted to get away from home as well. So went abroad, did a course in hairdressing, came back, worked at the Taj for a long while. But the dream was still always to pursue something with cars. So my journey in search of the destination continued. And so when I had enough money, I bought my very first race car of my dad when they used to sell off the old used cars and entered my first race. And boy, what a first race that was. I was just so nervous. And at the start line, my foot was shaking on that pedal. I had qualified in the front row, so I was even more nervous because now there was something to prove. My dad was watching. I just drove flat out and I remember around the first corner, someone behind me flipped. And then I just turned the rear view mirror and went into a zone of my own. As a result, I landed up doing an extra lap, not realizing that the race was over. Then I saw the yellow flags waving, telling me to slow down and go back. I came out into the stands, took off my helmet and all I heard was, Ay la, ye to ladki hai. And my friend Farah shaking me, do you know what you've just done? You idiot, you won! I was so excited, I was so excited. I was over the moon, I was jumping up and down and nobody could stop me. From that race, there was no looking back. Uh, kind of made my parents believe this is what I actually wanted to do. And then there were many years of racing and rallying and working with my dad in his workshop, building and tuning cars. And it was a fun run. Then marriage and kids happened and I changed yet another gear, helping my husband in his garment export business. But even though one has some pit stops along the way, the journey continues, right? Well, for now, it's time for us to take a pit stop. The comfortable ride, the pep of the engine and the refinement of the compass has made 600 kilometers fly by and we already are at Run Riders. Okay, finally at our destination where a new adventure is about to unfold. 600 kilometers we've done today and it just doesn't feel like that at all. I still feel fresh. I still feel like I could go on. But why am I here? What's the adventure? What's the rest of my story? How did I become an automotive journalist? All of that tomorrow morning. Run Riders in Dasada is a beautiful place to stay and at the crack of dawn, the birds chirping, the lush green surrounding, the multitude of friendly dogs to play with and your morning cup of tea are a delight. It's my kind of place with an ace naturalist, warm hospitality and an owner who is a car buff too. And so to continue the story from yesterday, how did I arrive here? How did I eventually become an automotive journalist? One fine day, Horma Sarabji, the editor of Autocar, who'd been a friend from my rallying days, calls me up and says, Hey, we're doing a TV show. Would you like to be a part of it? You cannot imagine my excitement to finally be back around cars again. I've come here because 
I love bird watching. Never really get the time to do it because we fly in and out of destinations and this requires a little time and patience. And I'm here with my friend Farah. Hello. <laughs> I say hi. <laughs> Who comes here every year as an avid bird watcher. And this place, Navatalao, is really, really special because it gets a wide variety of birds, some really rare species, migratory birds. So I'm quite excited. It's going to be a nice, long, adventure-filled day. And getting to Navatalao is really not easy, especially getting close to those birds. The terrain is tough, so you need a car that has go-anywhere capability, which is why the compass is with me on this journey to help me find my direction, quite proverbially. While Farah and me chatted and caught up, the compass did the hard work as it navigated the narrow road to the desert with agility. And then when we hit the dirt, it kicked up a storm. We ran through the run, we waded through streams, dropped down embankments and climbed up inclines with wheels in the air. And inside, we didn't feel a thing. The compass just killed the terrain till we chanced on a mesmerizing sight. Wow, we managed to get through some pretty rough stuff and get so close to the water's edge. I mean, it's unusual to get a car up so close to the birds and be able to see them like this. There's painted stalk, there's flamingos, there's river tern, there's Eurasian spoonbill, there's shovelers. Oh, I could go on. This is going to be a fantastic day and it's just begun. Even though we were a little early for the birding season, which is usually October to March, in this area we had some wonderful sightings. The flamingos foraging around and then flying off. The painted stalks looking like a work of art before flapping their massive wings and taking off right in front of us. Whiskered terns and chestnut belly sand grouse foraging away in the swampy lands. And the bright colours of the purple swamp hen among the tall reeds, the shiny glossy ibis and so much more. It was a riot in the but as we drove on in the more open spaces towards Navatalao and the mud got softer, we spotted the Indian courser. And then a rare sighting of an elusive bird, the collared Pratt and Cole, had us all excited. And then as the evening drew upon us and we were pitching our tent, we had another surprise. A greater thick knee that was sitting and observing us. Yet another prize viewing. Brilliant day it had been and as we sat there in the great outdoors with our bird books reflecting on the day gone by, a lonely Montague Harrier showed up and stared at us for a while, looking at the strange inhabitants of his surroundings. What a wonderful place, what a fabulous journey it's been and we've seen so many birds, I am rather excited, haven't done this for years and been wanting to do it for years and you know just like these birds that's what cars and driving gives you, the freedom to be liberated, to explore the world, to go wherever you want and enjoy the outdoors like this and the journey along the way and that's why I love it so much. In this journey, I think it's poetic justice that I've had a compass to help me find my direction, my calling. Think it's a